Greetings friends, David Marks here with a new tutorial on how to use the selective editing brush inside of Adobe Lightroom CC for mobile. Before we jump into today's lesson, I need to offer two quick warnings. First, I'm going to use an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil for this demo. This is an important detail because at the moment, the brush tip pressure feature only works on tools like these or the latest generation of iPhones. To be clear, the brush tool itself works fine on all other devices, but the pressure sensitivity feature that I demo at the very beginning of today's lesson is missing. Second, the selective editing brush can be a frustrating tool. This is a super useful one, but it takes more practice to master this tool than most of Lightroom CC's other features. With those warnings in mind, let me jump over to my iPad and let's get started. Let's get started today with a short discussion about the selective editing brush mechanics inside of Lightroom CC for mobile. To cover the brush mechanics, I'm gonna tap here on this flat gray backdrop to bring it over to Lightroom CC's editing workspace. As I'm sure you know by now, if I tap here and open up the light tools group, and then I press one finger against the screen on the exposure slider, I can drag this control up or down to make the whole image brighter or darker. This kind of change works great when the whole image needs to be adjusted, but these global sliders are not helpful when you're looking to alter just one small part of the big canvas. When we want to change just one part of our image, then it's time to activate the selective tools, which live here under this gray dot icon. Once you engage the selective editing mode, then a little plus symbol in a circle will appear in the upper left corner. Tap on the plus and three new symbols will appear within a blue bubble. Now, I've covered the radial and linear selection options in a separate tutorial, so I'm gonna ignore those features today and instead focus our attention solely on the brush option. As soon as I tap on the selective editing brush icon, a little gray menu will appear about midway down the left side of the screen. This menu controls the brush dynamics, and I'll come back to it in just a second. But first, we need to tell Lightroom CC what type of changes we want our brush to make when we start painting around our canvas. To do that, I'm gonna tap on the little triangle beside the word light again to open up this tool group. Next, I'm gonna drag the exposure slider way up for this demo, but you can change anything you want in this group or any of the others instead. I want to point out that while I'm holding my finger against the screen on top of this slider, that Lightroom CC is giving me an instant preview of what things would look like if I were to paint this type of change at full strength over the entire canvas. As soon as I lift my finger, that live preview goes away and we're ready to start painting. Now that we've told the program what sort of change we want it to make, now we have to pick the right type of brush. If I press and hold one finger, or the fancy Apple Pencil against this icon right here, then a red circle will appear in the center of the screen. That circle in the center represents the size of the brush that I'll be using when I start to paint. Without lifting your finger, slide up for a larger brush or slide straight down for a smaller one. That control is pretty easy, and the next icon down in this menu behaves the same way, but this one controls the hardness or feathering for our brush. Press on this icon and slide straight up again without lifting your finger to get a softer brush tip or slide down to get a brush with less feathering and a harder edge. Now, since I'm a sloppy painter and since it's hard to work with real pixel by pixel precision on a small mobile screen, I'm gonna suggest that you set this one to about 50% feathering or higher. The third icon down in the Brush Dynamics menu changes the flow. If you're using your fingers to paint on the screen, then this one can be quite helpful. At full strength, at 100%, each brush stroke is really powerful and noticeable. An 100% flow setting makes for fast work, but it's really hard to gently blend the changes that this type of brush will make into the rest of your image. My advice is that you keep this one set at about 50% or below. 
I'm giving you that advice so that you can layer one soft brush stroke on top of another and slowly build up the strength of the changes that you're trying to create. Now, if you're using an Apple Pencil and an iPad Pro, or if you're using an iPhone with 3D touch capabilities, then I suggest leaving the flow control alone because you can control the flow on these devices based on how hard you press your pencil or finger against the screen. Let me demo. For my very first brush stroke, I'm barely going to touch the tip of the Apple Pencil against the screen. I'll brush out a little line, but with such little pressure, nothing much is going to happen. Let me prove that I did paint a stripe by activating the red overlay. To do that, I'm going to tap once right in the center of the blue diamond. It's really subtle, but do you see a faint pink stripe where I painted? Let's call that a brush stroke of around 10% flow. This time, I'm going to paint another stripe but I'm going to use a bit more pressure as I press the Apple Pencil across the screen. Now we can see some faint results against that flat gray backdrop. I'll tap on the blue diamond again to show the overlay. See how much darker the red overlay is this time? The point that I'm trying to illustrate is that the harder that you bear down on the screen, or the higher that you set the flow if you're not using a pressure sensitive device, the more your brush will lay down with each stroke. Let me add one more stroke, but this time I'm really going to mush down hard against the screen. As you can see, this time that brush stroke has even more impact. And of course, if I activate the red overlay, then the red rubolith is even denser. Well, now that you've seen the mechanics of this tool, let's put these skills to use on a real image. This is my dog Bella. I love this photo of her hanging out in the back of a pickup truck. But when I shot this image, I didn't notice that blue strap on the far right behind her head. It's not a big deal, but that strong blue object pulls my vision away from the intense gaze in her eyes. Fortunately, with the selective editing brush, it's going to be easy to take some of the color away from that part of the photo without affecting everything else. I find it really helpful to zoom in first when I want to work on something this small using the two finger push out move before I activate the Selective Tools. When the Selective Tools menu appears, I'll pick the Brush option again. And now, I'm going to change the size of my brush tip. Since I'm going to paint with a soft feathery brush and pressure sensitivity, a brush of about 50 pixels should work fine here. Next, I'm going to double check the feathering is set to around 50% and that the flow is still at 50. I urge you to always double check these settings to prevent extra frustrations when working with this tool. Now that we have the brush tip dynamics set properly, I need to tell Lightroom what type of changes I want it to create when I start painting. In this case, I want it to suck some of that color away. So I'm going to open up the color tab on the right side of the screen, and then I'm going to drag the saturation slider way down. I don't have to set this slider with any precision because I can always come back and refine its strength after I've done some painting. My advice is that you overdo things at first. Push those sliders further than you think you'll need so that it's more obvious where you did your painting and then come back and refine them again and again later if needed. Since I'm using a soft brush and a flow that is less than 100%, I can paint back and forth a few times to slowly build up the strength of these changes. To check my work, I'm going to tap on the blue diamond to activate the red overlay. Not bad, but you can see that I spilled a little onto the truck and a bit on her ear. To clean that up, I'm going to tap here to switch from brush mode to eraser mode. As soon as I start erasing, the red overlay automatically hides which I find super frustrating. So what I like to do is to erase a little, then tap on the diamond again, and then erase a little, and then tap. I find that going in small strokes and checking my work frequently is better than trying to erase everything away all at once. As always, don't try to be too precise and keep checking your image. Make sure that you actually see some negative effects on your photo before you try to paint away every last bit of spillover 
in the overlay. If that spillover isn't causing any visible harm, and in this case, I don't think it is, then don't waste your day trying to paint the perfect mask on your mobile device. One other common frustration that's worth mentioning with this tool. When you tap on the blue diamond, the red overlay appears or disappears. But if you press and drag while you're on top of the diamond, then your brush strokes move around across the screen. If you meant to move all your brush strokes, then this feature is nice. But most of the time, and certainly in this case, that's not at all what I wanted to do. Fortunately, I can undo this mistake or any mistake by tapping up here at the top on the left facing undo arrow. Anyway, let's say that I'm happy with the way that this blue strap looks at this point. So I'll tap the done button in the bottom right to commit these changes. I'll double tap now with one finger on the image to zoom back out. And finally, I can press and hold one finger against the screen to see a complete before and after. I think that worked great, and now that blue thing is far less eye-catching. Let's do one more. This time, we're going to retouch this portrait of my young friend Ellis. As a portrait retoucher, I might want to make his teeth a little whiter and make those blue eyes really pop off the screen. To do these things, I'm going to need to work with more than one selective editing brush layer. So let's do the teeth first. Step one is to zoom in over the area that you want to change before you launch any of Lightroom CC's selective tools. Step two is to activate the selective tools group and then pick the brush option. Next, I'm gonna set myself up with a much smaller brush. Remember to slide your finger straight up and down when you're working with these controls. Step four, is to come over to the sliders in the panels on the right and set up the kind of changes that you want to make. In this case, I'm going to bump the highlights and white sliders up a little, and then I'll bring the saturation slider down. Now, let's paint. Good. Unfortunately, turning on the red overlay is not going to help us here since the overlay color that Adobe has chosen is almost exactly the same color as his lips and gums. Now in Lightroom Classic, we can change the overlay color, but sadly, that feature is not available in the mobile version yet. If you feel like you need to see exactly where you've painted, and if you run into a case like this one, where the red overlay isn't helping out, then try cranking the exposure slider way up or way down to see if that makes the areas where your brush strokes are affecting more noticeable. With the exposure slider set like this, I can switch to the eraser mode and do a better job with the cleanup. Once the image looks good, then you can go back and drop the exposure back to zero or whatever seems appropriate for that particular part of the image. I think that the color of Ellis's teeth look good now, so I'm gonna hit done. I'll press and hold one finger against the screen to see a before and after view. Better, but I think that I still need to adjust those settings a little bit. Fortunately, dialing this change back to a reasonable level or pushing it further is no problem. All I have to do is reactivate the selective tool and choose the brush again. Do you see how the diamond for our teeth changing command is gray now rather than blue? When the edit pin is gray, it means that this set of changes is not currently selected. To reselect those changes and to bring the sliders that we've already set back up, all I have to do is tap on the diamond. Once the pin is active, meaning blue again, I can come over here and adjust the sliders as many times as I want. Like Lightroom on a computer, everything that we do here in the mobile version retains its full editing flexibility forever. Now, Let's say that I want to bump up the intensity of those blue eyes. To do that, I need to create a new selective brush layer. I could do this either by tapping the Done button and then relaunching this tool, or by tapping the plus icon up there in the top left corner. Notice that the diamond on his teeth turns gray, which is great because now we can set things up for a whole new set of changes, changes that will affect his eyes, 
without altering the work that we did on this, the teeth, edit layer. For the eyes, I'm going to activate the brush tool, and then I'm going to pick a smaller brush tip size. Something around 15 should work well here. I'll quickly double check on the feathering and the flow controls, and then I'll dial in some changes using the sliders on the right. To make Ellis's eyes pop, I'm going to tap on this rainbow colored bar in the color tab and select a royal rich blue. Using this rainbow stripe, the paint color option, I can add whatever colors I want into my image. Before I start painting though, I think I'll add some clarity too. Now, all I need to do is to paint over Ellis's pupils and those eyes will leap off the screen with color and sharpness. If needed, I can do a little cleanup using the show overlay and the eraser. That looks good. My mask is fine now, but I think I overdid things with the blue colored paint when I set this up. To fix that, I'm going to go back to the color picker and I'm going to slide that little circle straight down to pick a less saturated shade of blue. Awesome. There's just one trick left to show, and then this image will be complete. With this selective brush active, I could go and paint over his left eye so that it matches the right. That would work fine in this case, but there's a more elegant method. Instead of painting any more, I'm going to press and hold on the blue edit diamond until a flyout menu appears. At the top of this secret menu, the menu that only appears when you long press the blue edit pin is the option to duplicate the current brush. See, now I have two diamonds, one that is gray and one that is blue. Well, instead of painting anymore, all that I need to do is to drag one of these diamonds over to his other eye. If needed, I could add more brush strokes to this eye or do some additional erasing without altering the changes that I made to the other eye or his teeth. But by now, I think you get the point. I'll tap Done. I'll zoom back out. And now, I'll show you the complete before and after results. From this to this, using three selective brush adjustments and less than 10 minutes of work. In my opinion, that's pretty amazing portrait retouching work. And it's revolutionary given that I'm working with a RAW file on a small mobile device. Well, there you go. Despite the frustrations of the touch interface, I think that this tool is amazing. I think that we have to give the brilliant folks over at Adobe a ton of credit for figuring out how to make something this powerful work on all our mobile devices. I hope that you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.